Hi, my name's Gwem, or Gareth Morris, if you prefer. I've been asked uh, quite a few times to record a few workshops I've done in the past about using the Atari ST for music, and specifically the music program I wrote called Maximizer. So this is intended to be a series of videos discussing uh, different topics about Maximizer, and this first one is just the very basics of buying an Atari ST and loading onto it my uh, software or any other software. So without further ado, I'll go on to the next slide. So we'll assume that you already have some kind of uh, modern computer, like a Mac or a PC, and that it is uh, connected somehow to the internet. Now you'll also need a floppy disk drive. I know most modern computers don't have one, but you can still um, buy one online. I've got this USB floppy drive here, which I got on eBay for less than £30. They're quite easy to find. You'll also obviously need to get yourself an Atari ST. You can use an emulator, and I might do a video about that in the future, but I'm going to concentrate on the real hardware for this video. So the best place to get an Atari ST is on eBay, or on Gumtree, Craigslist, whatever kind of site you have in your country. I especially recommend uh, eBay.de, the German eBay, because the Atari was very popular in Germany, and there's lots available secondhand. Except for the more high-end models, all of these machines are kind of the same price. And what I would recommend is buying a model which is called the 1040STE. I'll explain why that is a good model to get in just a moment. These uh, models here, like the, the Falcon, the Mega and the TT, uh, want some of these more expensive high-end models. So. If you're buying your first Atari, you might not want to get those. <laughs> but any other Atari ST, it maximizes uh, my music program with work with them all. When you buy one of these Ataris on, on eBay or wherever, make sure that um, you get a mouse with it or you buy one separately later. It's not really possible to use Maximizer or, or most programs without a mouse. So um, do get one. The mouse um, plugs in underneath the keyboard of the Atari. So why uh, do I suggest this particular 1040 STE? <coughs> it's already got um, separate uh, RCA phono jacks for the audio already fitted. It has two sound chips, one which is the normal YM sound chip for your chip tune, and it's also got a sound chip which is able to play 8-bit samples, which is a good thing to have. It's easy to upgrade the memory with SIMs, which you can easily buy on eBay or in um, kind of markets and so on. And the other good thing is when you format a disc on the ST, it formats it already in PC format, so you don't need to do anything special. It's slightly newer than the other types of Atari, so it might be more reliable. And you can also use um, Jaguar joysticks on, the, on these machines, which I think is kind of cool. So you'll obviously also need to get some kind of monitor. And Maximizer and most other kind of chiptune software, they all require a color screen. Now, only these high-end models, the Falcon and the TT, support uh, colour in VGA, which would obviously be easy to connect to some kind of other monitor. But since most Ataris don't have colour VGA, um, these are the other options. So the easiest and most convenient solution is to use an Atari monitor like this SC1224. Now the problem is that this monitor is actually quite rare, so you know you can also use a TV. The Atari has a quite a special 13-pin 
monitor port. So when you get one, you have to kind of figure out how you can plug it this into your TV. So you know that if your Atari has um, an output for an antenna, so you can plug that into your TV, you'll know that if it has an antenna port, then this Atari has the possibility to output composite video. And actually, I'm using composite video right now to record this video and, and go into the projector. If you don't have the RF output, then what you can do, you can still work with it using this RGB SCART lead. And if you search eBay for Atari ST RGB SCART lead, you will find quite a few that have been already made. Actually, doing it this way gives you the best quality video. And if you're an American and you don't have a TV with SCART, these days it's also possible to buy a SCART to HDMI converter. Now, you can fit a hard disk to the Atari, but obviously if you're just starting out, the best thing is just to use a floppy drive and a floppy disk. So here is a floppy disk and you'll also need some sticky labels and they usually come with the discs themselves. So here, here is the, the disc I'm going to show you. Now, first of all, a warning. Back in the day, these discs used to be very reliable. I remember using them for my homework and I never used to make any backups and it was all fine, but the computers are quite old now. The floppy disks aren't as good quality. They fail all the time, so never trust any data on the floppy disks. Make loads of backups. The floppy disks that you can still buy in the store are called high density floppy disks and they don't actually work with most Ataris. What you've got to do is to kind of hack them so that they'll work on every Atari and that's actually quite easy to do. So at the bottom of each disc there's two holes. One of them has a, a tab you can slide across and one of them is just completely open. So what you want to do is take the sticky label and cover the hole which is open, like I've done here. And now you can use it on an Atari. The other side, which has a sliding black tab, I don't know if you can see that there. Um, you need to flick this across so that the black tab is obscuring the hole. Now this will allow programs to write to the disk and if you want to protect what you've saved there you can flick it back so you can see through it but obviously at the beginning we want to write to the disk so make sure that's covered. So now what we have to do is to format this disk so that we can use it on the Atari itself and at this point I'm going to switch to the Atari which I've got set up here. So this is an Atari which I've bought on German eBay as you can see all the menus are in German. I'll put the floppy disk into the Atari here and in order to format the disk what you do is you select A Depending on the language of your Atari, it might not be disk station, but it will be a filing cabinet with A marked on it. Then you go to the second menu here, and then the last option allows you to format the disk. And then you choose OK. Then you do format A. This means single-sided, this is double-sided. So you pick double-sided if you can and then you click OK. At this point the computer will start to format the disk and this will gradually fill up until you get to the end and then it's formatted. Now this will only work on certain Ataris so if you have an STE which I recommended that will work 
you can still format it on another Atari, but it won't work with your PC. So if you've got an STE, then it's better to format it on the Atari. If you don't have an STE, then you can format it on your normal computer. So if you have a Mac, what you need to do is use Disk Utility, which is a program that already comes with your Mac. Then once you've loaded Disk Utility, you choose Erase. Then in the menu, you select MS-DOS FAT, and then you choose MBR, and then that will format this disk in a way which will work on your Mac and on the Atari. On a PC, you need to use this command here, and I can actually show you that. So, I've got my USB floppy drive, going to plug that into my computer, which is done now. Then I'm going to put the disk into the floppy, sorry, put the floppy into the drive. And then, and you type the following command, format a colon slash n9 slash t80. And then when you press return, that will format the disk. This percentage will gradually increase, which is obviously quite boring. However you format the disk, it always takes quite a long time. Uh, this is very old technology. Each of these Atari disks will store 720 kilobytes of data, which is in modern terms a very small amount. Um, like a Word document storing a letter would be much higher than uh, 720k. But uh, because the Atari is quite efficiently coded in, in terms of how much storage it uses, you can actually put quite a lot of programs on 728k. 720k. When this has reached 100%, I'll come back, I'll edit this part out. Okay, so this uh, formatting the disk is now completed. This is what it says if that's done correctly. So, no, I, I don't want to format another. So this disk is now formatted and ready to use between your normal computer and the Atari which you've bought. So I will go now back to the presentation. So the next step is to copy the programs that you want onto your floppy disk that you've just formatted. So if you want to use Maximizer, which is obviously what this series is about in general, you can go to the official Maximizer website, which I'll show you in a minute. There's also many very good programs on this website here, and I do recommend having a look. www.dhs.nu It's the website of the Dead Hackers Society demo crew, and they do a lot for the Atari scene, and they have a really good um, selection of programs you can try out. So let's try now The Maximizer website. So here is the Maximizer website in uh, all its dubious glory. So as you can see there's a lot of information here um, presented in quite a boring way. So um, if you want you can subscribe to the Maximizer mailing list and I sometimes said updates and secret versions of Maximizer. Uh, there's a link to various videos online. Uh, here you can download Maximizer which I'll show you in a minute. Believe it or not there's actually some online tutorials for Maximizer which I suggest you check out. Um, there's this very good musician's guide by the Atari musician Excellence in Art. 
And there's also a very good guide to the instrument editor by DMASC. There's also a bank of instruments that you can try and they've been produced by the Musician 505. But let's download Maximizer now. So you click on download. Here are all the old versions should you want to try them. I would suggest the latest version which is here and you can read the manual which you know it's probably a good idea. And there's also a list of changes compared to the previous version. So I'm going to click this and save that. So I'm going to save that in the downloads area of my computer. Obviously I've already downloaded that. So that's now being saved. Now I can, what I want to do is extract that zip file. And in there is Maximizer. So you, there's some tools here, some example music, and the program files themselves. You can select all these, choose copy, then you go to the floppy drive, takes a while because it's slow and old, then you do paste and this will then copy all the maximizer files onto the floppy drive. On PC this goes a lot faster than on Mac. Uh, the Mac assumes that this floppy drive is kind of like a um, USB memory key, which isn't really true. Um, so it puts all kinds of weird files in it and it works a, a lot slower. But it's not too bad on PC. When this gets to 100%, um, come back. Okay, so Maximizer is now copied onto the floppy disk, so we can use that on the Atari. Now, just a few notes here. On the Atari, if something ends in .prg, means that it's a program that you can run on the Atari. Now, you can see here there's three versions of Maximizer, which you can use depending on how much memory your Atari has. So, if it's a Atari 520 ST, then you use this program. It's a 1040, use this program, that means it has one megabyte of memory. And if you've upgraded your Atari, you have a high-end Atari, you can use the two megabyte version of the program. Actually, when you're copying this to the disk, all you really need is one of these programs, but it's good to have the example tunes as well. Now, I will also show you quickly the Dead Hackers website because I think it's good. Now uh, here is the Dead Hackers Society website. So what you want to do is here choose files and here you choose chip trackers stroke editors. And this will have this has got many trackers that you can try. So I'll give you my recommendations. Maximizer. This program, MusicMon, is a very good program. It has a beautiful user interface. Before I wrote Maximizer, I used to use this program, and it's very good. This program, Sid Sound Designer, is kind of a classic program. Many really good tunes were written using Sid Sound Designer. It has quite a lot of bugs and problems, but it's still worth checking out.
Triplex is another good tracker to try. It was originally written by a chip tuner called Big Alec, but in the last few years it's had a very big update from um, Damo, who's part of the Reservoir Gods crew. Definitely worth trying. And finally, just to point out Accelerate, which is a pretty good tracker and it also works on um, the black and white screen mode of the Atari. And that uh, just about sums up uh, my recommendations on the Dead Hackers website. So the next step is to run these on the Atari. So I'm going to eject the floppy disk. It's good to use the um, eject facility which comes down here like you would for a USB key. Got the disk. Now I'm going to put it into my Atari. Switch my projector to go to the Atari. And here we are. So, console to quit from the formatting. And then I can double click here on drive A, which is the floppy drive. And here you can see all the files which I copied from the internet. The interface of the Atari desktop works a bit like a really old version of uh, the Apple Mac. You can recognize the programs because the icon looks like this. Now I have a 1040 STE here, so I'm going to use the maximizer 1 megabyte. So all you do is double click on that and it will load the program. intro graphics and there is maximizer so I'm just gonna wrap this video up now I'm gonna do some more videos about you know how all this works but you might want to just try one of the example songs so you go to disk op and then load SMDH and then you can go into tunes And then you can choose one of the example tunes. I'm going to choose the first one. Just click that and choose OK. And that will load. Now that's loaded, you can just press play song. <laughs> 